What's up guys, it is Chris back with another watch video and today we're doing something that I think is pretty cool. This is sort of a comparison, but not a comparison of a bunch of different sports integrated bracelet watches. So on the table, I have a bunch of sports integrated bracelet watches starting with the very inexpensive going all the way up to the very expensive so we have a vacheron overseas here this is my world time we also have the ap royal oak offshore diver we have an iwc ingenieur this is the uh, mission earth version so in uh, 45 46 millimeters then we have the crew automatic ghost we have an aterna this is the Eterna Royal Contiki, something uh, you have not seen on the channel before. We'll be uh, doing a full review unboxing on that. We also have two Crew Automatic Diamondbacks here. This is the one on the rubber strap. This is the one on the bracelet. And then we have a D1 Milano that is called the Atlas. Uh, and this is the least expensive on the table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of them. I'm gonna, as I'm doing it, compare it to other versions of watches here. So I'm gonna uh, compare, let's say the D1 Milano to the Eterna or the Vacheron as I'm talking about it. But very quickly, all of these are automatic watches. They're all at very different price price range, ranges, obviously. Uh, however, all of them have integrated bracelets in one way or another. Some of them have rubber straps on them. However, all of them have available to purchase bracelets except for the Ghost. Every other watch here has a bracelet option or a strap option and if there is no bracelet on it i have the rubber strap as you can see what i'm going to do is i'll start with the cheapest and then i will move my way up to the most expensive and the way i say uh way i'm looking at this is the purchase price so what you can buy these for right now uh used or new which are the uh, least expensive to the most expensive so starting with the d1 milano so the D1 Milano is definitely the least expensive here. However, it isn't a slouch in any way. It really is made very nicely. You can definitely see there is a difference between the finishing and fit and finish on the case uh, and bracelet, specifically really the bracelet when compared to some of the other watches on the table. Actually, almost all of the watches compared to on, on the table. However, it is very nicely finished, especially for the price point. Uh, you can get these discounted on D1 Milano's website. So I believe they come in at $625. You could probably get them in the $500 range when they're running specials. This has a beautiful blue dial. This gets an NH35, so it has a Seiko automatic movement in there. It hacks, it hand winds. You don't get a, a screw down crown. You don't get a sign crown. You don't get a display case back, obviously. Uh, but at this price point, this is actually a very, very good contender. Uh, and it holds its own in this group of watches, I would say. It's thin, it's not incredibly thin, but it is thin. Uh, and obviously it is also inspired by some of the watches on this table. In fact, I would say the Royal Oak right there and also one that I don't own, uh, I would love to own, the Patek Philippe Nautilus. That's not a bad thing. Those are two great watches to be inspired by and they kind of put their own twist on it. The watch is entirely brushed except for the bezel, just these little four parts right here and everything else is essentially brushed except for those four little areas so very nicely uh, put together watch you have push pins and applied markers there is no loom on this watch whatsoever and a date wheel that is not color matched again 625 dollars you can get these on sale on d1 milano's website just a really cool watch for a very very good price now if I were going to compare this to anything on the table, I would say it's probably the obvious choice here. Well, maybe not the obvious choice, but it is to me, it's the Royal Oak because I think this is 
really inspired by the Royal Oak more than any other watch on this table. Um, and it looks, it looks good. Uh, it does not feel as good as this watch in, in hand, obviously, but you're talking about a $20,000 watch versus a $625 watch at retail. So uh, definitely check out D1 Milano if you're interested in getting something that is inexpensive and you want a sports bracelet watch, integrated bracelet watch, very good watch. So the next on my uh, hit list here is the Diamondback from Crew Automatic. Now I would say the Diamondback from Crew Automatic is the best all around watch on the table. That's based off of price, fit, finish, and quality. These are extremely well-made watches. They have automatic movements. You can see them in the uh, display case back. These are Swiss Tech movements. So uh, they're essentially Eta clones, very reliable, very nice movements. They're very well-finished watches, and these are inspired by the Vacheron. I would say, oh, there's a lot of inspiration from this Vacheron, uh, if you could see, definitely in the case shape, although the case shape is very original. As you could see, there's a lot of different angles. The case profiles are somewhat similar, but still at the same time, very different. Uh, this is more inspired by the 222, the Vacheron 222, while obviously the Vacheron is also inspired, the Overseas is also inspired by the Vacheron 222. Uh, this takes it a little bit further with the bracelet. The bracelet is actually uh, very inspired by the Vacheron 222. Even this little flip close clasp here is uh, directly uh, like a call out to the Vacheron 222. You do get a screwed in crown. You have crown guards on here, uh, textured dial, a lot of little accents, gold accents on the watch, the crown, the, the, um, the rotor and the uh, second hand right there. Really cool watch, you do get loom. I really love these watches. I think they're really well made, especially the ones on the bracelet. Uh, the one on the uh, rubber strap is really nice as well. The rubber strap is beautiful. You get a very nice buckle. These come in at $1,500 and then they go up to around $1,800 for the bracelet. Definitely go for the bracelet if you have the money. However, you will not be disappointed with the rubber strap. Uh, I really, really love Crew. I think they make really exceptional watches. Uh, and these are, like I said, all around the best bargain on the table. Uh, you know, they are not just a step above the D1 Milano. They're, you know, five or 10 steps above the D1 Milano. Again, they are more expensive, uh, but you could get discounts on these as well. I believe they offer like 10, 15% discounts here and there on their website. And I've seen that the, if you sign up for their email address or something like that. So you can get actually a discount on these as well. Uh, and they are thin, very thin. Uh, actually, I think the thinnest on the table next to the D1 Milano uh, and the D1 Milano is thicker. So. Uh, you know, you have some very expensive watches on this table, like the Vacheron, and the Vacheron is, you know, a $38,000 watch, which is thicker than the uh, $1,500 watch. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Is the finishing fit and quality up to the AP or the Vacheron? I don't know, I don't think so, but it's very, very nice. So next, moving on. The Eterna. Now, really, the Eterna. This is uh, this is sort of uh, an enigma. This watch is an awesome watch. It's a really cool. This is the Royal Contiki. The Royal Contiki is Eterna's higher end movement, higher end watch. So this gets their in house Eterna movement. Eterna no longer make this. They make the, the Contiki still, but they do not make the Royal Contiki. So this line just sort of died out. This was their PVD version. They made a bracelet version on uh, that's all stainless steel. They made a chronograph version. And for some reason, a PVD gold version, which actually sold, it was very expensive. This one 
actually sold around $82 to $8,500, so around that $8,000 to $9,000 range. This is a GMT. It has uh, a rubber strap on it, a very nice milled buckle. Like I said, in-house or turn a movement. And one thing about the movement is I could show you just by turning over some of these other watches that have display case backs, you can see the movement is actually, you know, a newly designed movement because this is essentially an ETA 2824 clone. It's the size of an ETA 2824. This is one of Vacheron's older movements because it's the world timer. They don't use the new movements that they're using in all of the other v series three overseas. So this is a smaller movement when compared to a newer design movement like the Eterna, you have a larger diameter movement. So it's a little bit nicer to look, look at when you're looking through the case back, especially since this is a 42 millimeter watch. Now getting back to actually sizes, I'm sorry, 41 millimeters on the D1 Milano, same thing, I think these are around 41 millimeters on the Crew Automatics, 43 millimeters almost on the Vacheron, 42 millimeters on the AP, but the AP is a watch that wears a lot larger, and I would group these three in together more than what I would group these within. Uh, but anyway, let me just get back to the uh, Eterna. The Eterna is an enigma because these sell from anywhere from $2,000 to $600 on eBay right now. Uh, and how is that even possible? Well, I'll tell you, I paid $625 for this watch. I cannot believe it. It is extremely cheap. Now, there's a few reasons why I paid $625. Is it a new watch? Yes. Is it in good condition? Absolutely, almost brand new condition. Is it a reliable watch? No. I own another Interna. I own another Interna with this exact movement in it. The date wheel doesn't work already. And there are many Eternas on eBay that you'll find with this movement and it's probably going to have some sort of issue with the date wheel. Eterna did not address a lot of these, so there is a lot of issues with these watches. So if you find one with a functioning date wheel, which this one does, it will function for a while, or it may not, and then it also may not work at all. Uh, the, the, the watch may stop telling time. So you're gambling if you're gonna buy an Eterna with an in-house movement. Is it a gamble? Yes. I, I, I took the gamble and I really like this watch. I don't know if it's going to last. I don't wear all of my watches uh, on a daily basis. So obviously it's not going to get as much risk time as a person who only owns one or two watches. Um, so I'm willing to take that risk. Anyway, really cool watch. But like I said, I would go with something a little bit more reliable. Uh, if you are concerned, definitely the D1 Milano has a very reliable movement in it, the NH35, or the Crew Automatic, which obviously have a very reliable ETA based uh, clone. And then speaking of Crew Automatic, here is the next expensive watch, I would call it. And this is the Crew Automatic Ghost. This is a fully skeletonized watch, ceramic bezel, titanium, 43 millimeters, display case back. Again, you can see this is actually a very large movement. Um, like I was saying, they, they actually designed this for Crew Automatic. This is a proprietary movement, really beautiful skeletonized rotor on here. Uh, definitely check out the unboxing I did of this watch. I'm going to be doing uh, a full review actually very soon and I will be getting back to you guys on what I think about this watch. But honestly, I, I think it's a very impressive watch and, and you'll uh, you'll see from the full review, but I'll be doing a lot of close ups on the dial macros of the movement. Just a really impressive watch. And this watch comes in at around $3,000. So you're getting a lot of watch for your money. Screw down crown, just a beautiful watch. Uh, one of my favorite parts is this buckle. It's really, really, really nice. 
the tolerance is really good on this watch. Just a very cool watch. So, the next watch. I'm gonna go to the IWC. So the IWC is probably the next ex expensive watch, even though the Eterna, I consider the Eterna less expensive because it's not exactly um, being made anymore. So uh, neither is the IWC. The IWC is a really cool watch. Of course, designed by Gerald Genta, which has a lot of similarities in the case look and feel as the AP. You can see the crown guards, the dial itself. There's a texturing on the dial on both of them. Uh, the hands are obviously inspired by the Royal Oak. Just the profile, the whole watch looks like the Royal Oak. Of course, it was it was also designed by Gerald Genta. Uh, the original design did not look like this. As IWC updated the design, they made it closer and closer to the uh, Royal Oak. Obviously with uh, good intention uh, to do so, and I, I think it looks good. This has a bracelet option. You can get a bracelet on this. Uh, this is the planet, uh, Mission Earth, excuse me. Just a really cool watch. This is a 46 millimeter watch. I'll throw this on my wrist so you can see. It does not wear small. It actually is pretty big. Uh, but I really love this watch. And uh, it's one of my favorite watches uh, in my collection. So next we have the Vacheron. Let me put the bracelet back on here. Just like that. I love this watch. The Vacheron. This is, well, I, I, I think the next actually most expensive would be the AP. Uh, that comes in around uh, $20,000, uh, $20, I believe, on the, on the secondary market now, more than the asking price was originally when, uh, when purchased. Uh, this is a $38,000 watch on the uh, at retail, and then you could buy it for... Uh, $30,000 or thereabout on um, the secondary market. Uh, comes with three bracelets. This is the stainless steel. It also comes with the rubber bracelet and uh, an extra buckle. And then it also comes with uh, a crocodile with a uh, rubber, uh, rubberized inside. It's a beautiful watch. This is the world timer. This is the silver dial. This dial has actually been discontinued. Uh, the bracelet on here is absolutely amazing. You have micro adjust built in, very, very easy to do. Just a really good looking watch and a very uh, ro very robust watch. It's, it's actually a very well-made watch, obviously, for that price. Uh, the only thing I would say is I wish I had a little bit bigger of a crown. It has probably one of the smallest crowns on the table, which is weird uh, because it has one of the larger cases. It is a 42 and a half, 43 millimeter. Um, and uh, just the awesome watch really i i just love this watch it's so good looking um and it is my go-to uh and then you have the ap the royal oak really does not go with the rest of the watches on this table because it is a true dive watch rotating inner bezel and it is quite large and chunky this is not just a sports watch this is a dive watch um you know it's it's definitely a great watch. It does wear very large. It's a 42 millimeter, but with those crown guards, it wears very, very large, especially with the rotating crown here. It does wear very large. The bracelet is beautifully made. It's very chunky. It feels great in the hands. Uh, is it as nice as the Vacheron bracelet? No, absolutely not. Is it as comfortable as the Vacheron? No. Actually, if I'm going to be honest, the most comfortable watch on the table, I would say, is either the Crew Automatic on a rubber strap or the bracelet. The bracelet's very, very comfortable. Or the D1 Milano because it is light and it feels very nice on the wrist. I would say out of all of them, probably the Crew Automatic, then the D1 Milano, then the Vacheron. Uh, I'm getting used to the Eterna. The Eterna is actually very comfortable. The least comfortable on the table uh, by far is the um, the AP. It is big, bulky, uh, and very, very heavy. The bracelet's very heavy. The Ghost, the Ghost is actually comfortable. It is a very large watch though. 
uh, where similar to the IWC. I wouldn't say either of them are uncomfortable at all, but they are big watches. They're not small. And you can see the crew automatic on my wrist. So this is about 43 millimeters, but it wears like a 44 or 45. It wears bigger than that uh, dimensions because of those crown guards. So, uh, awesome watches, really uh, just amazing look to these watches. I love, absolutely love uh, integrated sports bracelet watches. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, like this video, but uh, it's something that I've wanted to make for a little while. And uh, so here we are. Before I wrap it up, I'm going to do a quick loom shot. Um, I'm not sure if you guys really care about this sort of thing. I'm going to exclude the AP from the loom shot because it is a diver's watch. So obviously it will have better loom than most everything on this table. Um, I know that the Vacheron has terrible loom. The D1 Milano has no loom. I would imagine the IWC will be a very good contender or the Eterna, but we'll see. Um, let's check it out. So as you can see, like I said, the AP, the brightest set of the table, uh, obviously because it is a dive watch, 300 meters of water resistance. The rest of the watches here are between 50 meters and 100 meters water resistance, except for the Vacheron, which I think is 150 meters water resistance, kind of a weird number. No loom on the D1 Milano, and like I said, I'll remove the AP so you can see. Uh, so what we're looking at, IWC definitely I think is the brightest out of the, out of the bunch. Very disappointing from the Vacheron as usual, and very disappointing from the Eterna. Very disappointing from the Eterna. Uh, I can't even believe that the uh, loom is is gone in of just moments from the indices. I I am very surprised. Uh, the Crew Automatic are pretty good. Uh, I would say the Ghost is the least amount. Obviously still better than the Vacheron. Uh, it has actual indices that are loomed. Uh, I would say that the, uh, the Diamondback, obviously they are exactly the same dial, so they look really good. Beat out the Eterna, that's an $8,000 watch. They beat out the Vacheron in $38,000 watch. Uh, pretty ironic, I would say. Uh, honestly, uh, in conclusion of this, I, like I said, I would go for the Crew Automatic if you're looking for an affordable, um, uh, version of a uh, automatic integrated bracelet sports watch with stainless steel bracelet. Um, other than that, you know, the bargain on the table, I would say, is the IWC because you can get the IWC used. They no longer make the IWC. You don't need to get this version. You can get them for around $3,000. They're pretty cool watches and they're, they're not a bad price. Anyway, if you found this video interesting, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, and I will catch you guys in the next video.